Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and I am so honored to announce that with me today, I have Peter Anthony of the film Vengeance, uh, Friday 13th movie. Uh, how are you doing today, brother? Awesome, man. How are you doing? Thanks for having me, first of all. Oh, no problem, man. Really, the pleasure is all mine. Um, so, real quick, how are you holding up with quarantine? How's everything going with COVID for you? Um, I'm doing my best. My, my work, I'm, pretty, I'm an essential worker, so they only furlough, furloughed us once in a while. So like one, one week out of a month, it's a weird thing. So this week is actually my week off for furlough. So I've been good, man. I've, I've been, I, I redid my entire garage. I made it a workout center. I added a TV to it. Um, I've been helping my parents out at their house. So I, I don't really, I'm getting older. I don't go out too much. So uh, it wasn't that much of a change for me. How about you? Right. Oh man, just uh, my, I don't know if you know or not, but my wife is a respiratory therapist. So it has oh. been, you know, hitting a little bit hard. So um, I appreciate you taking all the necessary precautions to try to keep you and your family safe. Uh, appreciate you going to take care of your parents, man. I lost my mom last year. So something I take very serious. Sorry to hear. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I did bring up Vengeance, Friday the 13th Vengeance. If you guys haven't seen it, it is on YouTube. I'll put the link down in the description. Um, it's awesome. I love this movie. I love the Elias Voorhees storyline. I'm not going to get into it because I want you guys to watch it. I don't want to spoil it. But if you ever wondered about Jason's father, look no further than this. Uh, what uh, announcement you have, Vengeance 2 has been greenlit. Correct. Can you tell us anything about that? So uh, Vengeance 2, uh, the original director was Jeremy Brown. Jeremy Brown has since moved to, I think it's North Dakota. So wait, in the movie was in Seattle. So too far for him. He doesn't fly. So um, thank, thank God uh, he allowed us to continue the story. So Jason Brooks took it over. You know, Jason who plays Jason Voorhees. Yeah. Uh, he basically did everything on set anyways. But he took it over and he asked me, hey, you want to co-write it? You want to do it again? And I'm like, yeah, I guess I'm not dead. And he's like, no, you're not. And I'm like, okay. So I'm, I'm going to be a major actor in it. And then me and him are co-writing, doing everything else, signing casts, you know, just doing a million different things. Sean Lutzis was one of the major producers. That's whose lake we shot on. That's whose land we shot on, the cabin. He's back. His daughter, Sanaya, is back. So we're pumped, man. And the story, whew, like the first one, <laughs> the first one we had, to, we had to satisfy so many backers. We had to put like 50 backers in it. And so we couldn't really tell this great elaborate story that we wanted to. Now it's more like six, eight characters, very story driven. And the word bloodlines is the Jarvis bloodline history and the Voorhees bloodline history, independent of themselves and how they clash. Oh, that's awesome, man. I'm beyond excited. If you guys watch Vengeance, you'll see why uh, the perfect ending to that movie as well to set up what is going to be in Vengeance 2. Um, and I think things are kind of crazy right now with quarantine, but do you have any other projects you're working on right now as well? Yeah, so uh, Fall of Camp Blood is another fan Friday 13th fan film, believe it or not. Um, and um, you remember Rob in part four, uh, Rob Dyer? Mm -hmm. I play his brother in, in this one, Fall of Camp Blood. It takes place one year after part four. And they're going to demolish oh. Camp Blood, Fall of Camp Blood. So they send back, the parents send back their kids to go get their belongings. And in doing so, they awaken Jason. So um, it, it's been a really, really fun story. Part four is my favorite. And then followed by part six. So uh, we had Jonathan Iden, who's an MMA fighter on, in, the, in the movie. I got hurt in the movie. They had to reattach my entire shoulder back onto my shoulder, uh, <laughs> cut my chest. So I tore four tendons, snapped my bicep in a fight scene, kept pushing through, had to have surgery. They put the movie on hold. So I fly out to Chicago on the 15th, shoot my scenes. They wrap it up in October, and it should come out next year. So you said that you uh, hurt yourself during a fight scene. Uh, How does the other guy look? Uh, he looks great. He's an MMA legend. He's fought Ken Shamrock. He's at 150 fights. So. Believe it or not, I it, it's going to be in – people kind of know, but I swung a bottle, and in the weirdest thing, in swinging the bottle, I tore four major tendons off my shoulder. My bicep rolled down to my elbow. It was crazy, man. Wow. Yeah, well, man, I'm glad you're okay because that kind of shit, man, it's weird how sometimes you hear about people yeah. sleeping, rolling over and breaking a rib. Yeah. You know? 
that's me, man. I've had 39 surgeries. So anything oh, you wow. can imagine. Yeah, anything that breaks on me, I, I've broken it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, man, and obviously you are a big fan of the Jason Voorhees Huge. saga. Uh, let's get into your first horror movie, which was? Man, the ones I, I remember when I was little just watching Friday the 13th, and I, I think it was part three that I was watching in my parents' basement. And I'm, I'm a little older. I don't know how old you are. I'm 44. Mm -hmm. But back in the day, it wasn't sexy to watch horror like it is today. So, like, my parents' generation, nobody watched horror. It wasn't cool. So, like, you were almost a weirdo to watch it. And I remember being in my basement, like, try making masks and watching Friday 13th Part 3 uh, in my basement. So, I think that's the first one I ever saw. And I, lo I loved it because he had big traps. And just the way he, he walked everything. Uh, Richard Brooker, this gentleman right here, it, it was great. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. And for those of you yeah. that don't know, Friday the 13th Part 3 is 3D. Um, 3D. That's why I do got the glasses. I, we watch it still. Um, that's why you do get a lot of this in the movie with yo-yos and everything. And actually, that's a complaint I hear a lot. And um, I overlook it, man, because I just did a 31 on 31 where I uh, got the idea from some other great YouTubers. And I ranked my favorite Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street, and Friday the 13th from 31 down to 1. And uh, Friday 3 was number 3. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, that's by far my favorite. Um, you, know what's love... funny? you know what's funny on 3? Someone, people either have it really high or they have it really lower. Mm -hmm. It's weird. It's weird like that. Yeah. And the people that have it really low is always for the visual effects. For the people right. I talk to, they don't like all the 3D stuff. I'm like, well, you know, go out and get you a pair of these bad boys and you'll be just fine. Right. You know? And, and then some people don't like the porn music, what they call, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, but I, it's, I, love, I love 3. Oh, so me in my, too, man. In my, um, if, if I may, in my room, I have shadow boxes yeah. that I spent my whole life collecting. So uh, this one is part three. I don't know if you can see it good. Oh, yeah, dude, it looks awesome. So that's the actual I love thing. The, I love the, the top. For me, it's the top left. I don't know what size it is for you, but with the knife coming out, the original promo poster right there, the 3D yeah. promo poster. I love right that there. poster, man. That's the Fangoria that she's reading in the movie. Now, in the movie, oh. she's holding it. It says Godzilla 20. That's not correct. That was a different cover put over. This is the actual one she's reading inside. That's awesome. That's the And then part three. And then this is him. That's his real signature, Richard. Yes, man. And then, hold on, I got more for you, son. Yeah, then, absolutely. I'm <laughs> and then my, my part four, I can't see if we can get this. That's my favorite movie, part four. So that's the actual knife Ted signed in the movie, the 11 by 17. Ted signed the plaque. <laughs> yeah. uh, each figure, the mask, and the actual VHS. Oh, that's awesome. And then my that's second my favorite, favorite mask. I think yeah. part four, like I said, three is my favorite, but I think part four is the best one. Um, and then my second favorite movie is Six. So that's yeah, uh, he signed the the thing. Then Tom Matthews and CJ signed that. The VHS mm -hmm. signed and all that. And then I got some heads in the way here, but let me see if I can move them. Uh, part seven. Yeah. Now that was handmade by Anthony Kane, that that weed eater, because it doesn't come with that figure, and he signed it, Kane. So right now it's it's one of the only ones in the world, and that's me and him in Chicago. Oh, dude, that's so sick. Yeah, and then what you want to see, I'm almost done with this room, but I got more to go is all these guys here. Yeah. The heads. They're all, they're all signed. Look at that. Dude, one. those are incredible, man. They look great. Yeah, yeah. I got I got Steve Dash and Warrington Gillette to sign that, which is very rare because Steve Dash hated Warrington Gillette, so they usually <laughs> wouldn't sign the same thing. <laughs> So sorry I went off on a tangent. I just think you'd like it. Dude, I love it, man. I think that's amazing. I love the fact that you're doing this, but you're still a huge fan. Like, that's that is so cool. That's what I've always been to you. And I've become pretty good friends with Kane. Like, we'll hang out and drink and go to dinner sometimes and stuff. So it's pretty cool. That's cool. And for those of you, you already know because you've already seen it on the show, but I had C.J. Graham do an episode. Uh, and yeah. um, for those of you that don't know, I, I, we discussed it in the episode, but he did play Elias Voorhees in Vengeance. Um, do we have any update on if he's coming back for Vengeance 2 or not? Um, we haven't officially announced it, but, uh, yeah. I mean, we can't do two without him, so, uh, especially with the storyline. And that, that scene where you see him at the, you know, when it's him and, and him at the fire and he's burning the Jarvis picture, it's kind of, we got a lot more to elaborate on all that, so we're excited about it. 
They, yeah, I, I, like that. yeah, I'm beyond excited, man. Um, let's get back you to know, Friday. You know, Steve Dash was in it, right? you know Steve Dash was in it, right? Yeah, in uh, Vengeance. Steve Dash played Officer Riolati. Oh, I did know that. Yeah, so so J- Steve Dash had this this feud with Warrington Gillette. Warrington Gillette in part two only played the hillbilly Jason through the window. Yeah. So for years, they had that at a con, Warrington would say he was the part two because Steve never really did cons. So then, long story short, maybe 10, 12 years ago, he found out they had like a feud. So he would always sign the real Jason. So that's why we named his character Officer Realati. And that's why he said, look, I'm the real fucking Jason. I'm exactly. the Jason you got to worry exactly. about. <laughs> that's yeah. fucking awesome, man. Yeah. And another thing, I'm not going to get into too much detail about this because I want people to discover it for themselves. Okay. But there is a tie-in to A Nightmare on Elm Street, and there is also a tie-in to Halloween in this movie. So see if you guys can pick those out. The Halloween one's kind of obvious. The Elm Street one, not as much. Right. There's but, a lot of Easter eggs, too, from other ones in there. Oh, I loved it, man. That's another thing. Like, we put it up on my projector in my living room, and me and my wife watched it about three times, just picking out different stuff that we noticed as it went along. So it's a good yeah. thing you got that workout room. Maybe take Jason a little better this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he, he was intense, man. Yeah. Like I, said, I, was telling, I was telling people the other day, you know, he's a really good friend of mine. We're pretty much best friends. And uh, we've become, even though we're on different sides of the state. I'm actually living in Connecticut. He lives in Seattle. So uh, we were getting ready to that scene, laughing, shooting. He get makeup. He comes out. I was like, wow. And I was like, all right, I'm going to hit you with this, this, do this, this, this. And he just stared at me. And I was like, okay. And then, and then I'm like, hey, what do you want to do with this? And he just stared. He never talked. He never got into care. He, he actually made it scary. He's Jason. He, he's mad. Right. right. He ain't messing That's around. sick, man. I, yeah. Well, it comes off, man. Like, again, I don't want to spoil much, but uh, – when the funniest character in the movie, the old drunk dude, yeah, um, when he meets up with Jason, yeah, that scene just gives you you feel the intensity from Jason Brooks there. Yeah. Do you know who? Uh, uh, do you know who the hillbilly was? I don't. That's Jason Brooks. Really? Yes. Yeah. So that Jason for that one scene was somebody else. I mean, I, I won't tell you who it is unless you want me to, but that was that was one of the perks. So that's, Jason Brooks plays the hillbilly. So Jason Brooks pretty much is the best two characters in the movie, the hillbilly and Jason. Yeah, that hillbilly cracked me up, man. Uh, I sent scary. you a video of it when I was yeah. watching it. I, I remember I texted yeah. you the video like, dude, this is gold, man. Uh, he's good. And the thing is, he doesn't even like script it out. He just like one lines it, just shoots him out like nothing. It's awesome. <laughs> That's great, man. I'm glad you told me that because I didn't even realize it. That's, that's incredible. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He did everything. So the guy, just to give you a little insight, because people won't know anyways, uh, the guy who played him is like, I don't know, 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, we did a perk where you could, you could kill somebody on screen as Jason. It was like $10,000. So that guy won it. So we took him. If you go back and watch the scene now, he's on a box. Because, you know, Jason's 6'6". Six, six, and yeah. and our Jason was towering over him. So this guy was on like a two foot box, like <laughs> to, to make that scene look like Jason was taller. That's incredible, man. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, you guys, and um for those of you that don't know, I'll put the link in the description as well. You are having a golden ticket giveaway, which ends in September, or is it uh ni- 19 days? Okay. Um this episode will air before that, so um, yeah. I'll put that link in the description as well. If you buy a DVD, Blu-ray, or a combo pack of Vengeance, you have the chance to enter a drawing for a golden ticket, which will come with your package to give you the chance to be in Vengeance 2 and get killed by Jason. So I'm, I'm I bought great. one. You know, Daddy's got his fingers crossed too. So yeah. <laughs> we're all hoping. Yeah. Um, either way, man, like I said, this is such – it's so cool what you guys are doing, you know, bringing fans in. Because like I said, it's awesome talking to you. We've had a couple different conversations. And how much a fan you are of the Jason Voorhees lineage. And, you know, you're doing all this paying homage to it. But you could feel the genuine uh, genuineness, I guess, when I yeah. talk to you about how much you are truly passionate about what you're doing. Uh, you know what else I'm passionate about? Passionate. Is that is that house one behind you? It is. I told you, man. I love. I knew it. I love that film. Did you know that Kane Hodder played uh, a stunt in that film? Big Ben. Yeah. Uh, not only that, he played the um, the purple rotted wife when she falls down. Oh yeah, which after he shoots her. Yeah, yeah. That's Kane Hodder. 
House was my first horror movie. It is my favorite horror movie. Um, I got the uh, the T-shirt, the poster. I love it, man. I think it's the perfect movie. Um, scared the I, shit out of me, man, when I was little. Dude, the first yeah. jump scare. In the first 10 minutes, you have the jump scare with the ant. You know, when she's in the room hanging. Dude, yeah. scared the shit out of me, man. The little kids running around. And then Ben, at the end, his makeup was like equivalent with part seven makeup for Kane. I thought it was yeah. phenomenal. It yeah. looks, he looks scary. It doesn't look, yeah. and it's all practical stuff too. So that's what makes it so much better. That whole, right. I, I could talk to you for hours about House, man. Like I said, that's my, that's my baby right there. That's my favorite it's, movie. It's so genius in the fact that nothing really happens except the little things that do happen are so impactful that, that mm -hmm. it works. It's, like, it's almost like the house is, is just a backdrop of what's going on. He's just wandering through and, and encountering things. It's just yeah. and it's the aloneness of him in the house scares the shit out of you all the time. Yeah. And the thing about this movie, which I feel about with most horror movies, it's something I've talked about, emotion. I think horror movies have just as much emotion as any rom-com you're ever going to watch, man. Um, right. if, a lot of horror movies play on that emotion to get you, like Roger losing his son in the movie. Right. You feel that emotion, that sadness, which makes that fear heightened, in my opinion. When they're playing on your sadness, that right. heightens your fear as well. So, and just like you're talking about uh, Friday 7, you know, there's a lot of sadness in that. There's a lot of sadness in all the Friday the 13th movies. I agree. I agree with you on the Roger part, too, because you're like, why would he go through the window in his bathroom? Why would he push himself? Because he's trying to get his son back. Yeah. That, yeah. So, so I, I thought that was great too. That that movie's so underrated. I, I have a hard time watching it alone now. <laughs> yeah. It's such a good movie, man. It's, yeah. I'm so glad you brought that up. It, it's one of those things where like where I'm from, not a lot of people knew that movie growing up. And like you said, it's severely underrated. So I feel like it's mine, you know, like, cause nobody right. knew. So when I hear people talk about it, I feel this sense of pride. Like, yes, yeah, somebody appreciates yeah. this thing, you know? That's like, how I used to be with Phantasm before it got a little bigger. Cause I used to love the Phantasms. Nobody even heard of them. And I love I got the I got the box set downstairs. I, I love that. I oh, just man. met them. I met them all um, a year and a half ago in Massachusetts, except for uh, Angus Scrim. And they all I got I bought the ball, the real one, and I had them all signed. Oh, that's so sick! I used to have a little toy ball, not from Phantasm, but a little silver one. And yeah. my grandpa kind of took it in his workshop and made a little like notch on it, so oh, that yeah. way it looked like the Phantasm ball. And we would right. play where I would throw it. He would act like he stuck it to his head. Yeah. You know? Did you know, you know, in the movie, when it's, when it's going down the hall, that's just somebody baseball tossing it from their knees. If you look, it's got a little trajectory to it. It's got a little yeah. arc. And then they would either rewind it or speed it up. That's all that is. That's so cool, man. I love yeah. learning behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, me too. I talked to all of them about it. And uh, they loved I, I bought. I felt bad because, um, oh, my God. The guy who played the, the main character in one wasn't in two. What's his mm -hmm. name? But he was in three. So the, the ball was there for part one, two, and three. And I like the two ball better because it has the drill. But I didn't want yeah. him to sign it. So I bought, I bought the part one ball. I said, hey, I bought the one ball because I didn't want to make you sign something you weren't in. He said, I really appreciate that, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. I get that because, like, I'm not going to buy um, a Friday the 13th part three mask and ask CJ to sign yeah. it. Yeah, you'd be surprised, man. I sit at Kane's table sometimes at some of the conventions, and people will, will have him sign things. And he explains it to him too, or they'll have him sign something like from a different movie. And he's like, you understand I'm not in that movie, right? And they're like, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they don't know. Right. Well, I mean, to me, that's kind of disrespectful, you know? I'm not going to walk up to a member of the Beatles and ask them to sign my Paul McCartney and the Wings album. <laughs> right, right, right. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, to me, that's just, it's, it's, it's disrespectful, man. It, it, this stuff becomes a part of you. You know, the yeah. stuff that you guys are doing, it's an offshoot of you. I can't go up to Robert England and ask him to sign my Michael Myers mask. Right, right. You know, so I, I completely get where they're coming from, man. I can feel the disrespect there because they're proud of the work they do. They don't want right. to take credit for something they didn't do. And they don't want to be known for something they didn't do because of how proud they are of the things that they did. Right, right. I'm going to have to watch your 31, your 31 uh, list when I get done with this because I definitely want to see that. I appreciate it, man. It really, really means a lot. Um, yeah. I want to ask you about Friday 3. Um, which scene do you think affected you the most and why? The first kill by far. Uh, you got to think about it, right? So, so you had in one, there's no Jason. In two, there's Steve Dash, who was like, you know, 5'9", regular size guy, was like herky-jerky almost in the motions, just fighting guys. 
But then three came, and and Richard Brooker's like, I'm gonna play this totally different. And you know, that's not in the script. It's just walk over, you know. And the way he just popped out, like just around there after he killed Shelly, shot the harpoon, dropped it, and walked back like it was a Tuesday afternoon. To and those mm -hmm. traps, those big ass traps coming off his head, I was just like, wow. That that's it scared the shit out of me that his his um his lack of of respect for life it didn't mean anything that he killed him. yeah yeah and he walked away well, just menacing you know while we're while we're on Shelly I was gonna ask you who who's your favorite non Jason character in this movie Shelly and I partied with him in Arizona at Mad Monster too oh. super nice guy. Shelly yeah. is easily, I mean, I don't count Crispin Glover as the fool, um, right. but Shelly out of all like the jokester fools, Shelly's easily the best, man. Right, right. And, and so, he, he, takes, I, he takes it with a grain of salt. Like he's, he's ha he, like even now when you talk to him about it, he laughs about it, you know? Right. That's yeah. awesome, man. Cause he, he was such a, I, like I said, I grew up watching the, of the three movies, the three big three, um, Halloween five, uh, Friday 13th three, and Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Those were my favorites of the big three horror franchises. So to watch stuff like this and talk to somebody about it this many years later, who it also affected so much, means a lot to me. So yeah, thanks. in this movie, death scenes everywhere. Which one is your favorite death scene in the movie? In three? Yeah. Probably when it chops the guy in half I'm doing the handstand. Handstand? Yeah. Did you know that they, they removed the floor and they put a glass floor there and put a camera up on him so you could actually see the machete going through him as he gets hit? Just think about it. You would never be able to see that because it'd be wood. Yeah. Because you could see his hands pressed. So, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, I mean, there's a million of them. The girl with the poker right from Fangoria, but I, I like that one. They seem creative. And then he stuffed them in the rafter. Right. The rafter yeah. part, is, that's probably my favorite scene in the movie, the rafter part. But yeah. I got to tell you, man, even though it's the paper mache head, I love the head squeeze, man. The eyeball I, coming out. Oh, it was great. Yeah. It was at the time. If you look at it now, it doesn't hold up as well. You right. Know? But, but to me, it's still great. Oh, and I'll tell you this. And I'm, I'm not shitting on the movie, dude, because I do really enjoy Freddy vs. Jason. But I will take the paper mache head squeeze over the dude that kind of reminded me of Jay from Jay and Silent Bob getting cut in half and all that fake CG blood everywhere. Yeah, I'll take that. that practical head pop over that CG a hundred times, no matter how bad it looks. Now, th that was the problem with Freddy vs. Jason. And I get in this conversation about practical versus CJ all the time now. The practical effect is dead. I mean, you had what you had was generations of skill sets from the thing to Savini to all that. And they were all bettering themselves. And, and there was a craft and you went to school and they don't get me wrong. They still have it. But now it's like, well, we could do it for 10th the price CGL. So like yeah. that, that craft is dying, you know, and, and I agree very much Jason with that, with that like John Woo shit where his head gets chopped off and the blood spraying. And I did like the end scene. It just, they overdid it. It looked a little cartoonish and fake. I, I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. And see, I, I'm that guy that will defend Freddy versus Jason till the end of the world because I'm telling you, man, at the end of Jason Goes to Hell, when Freddy's glove popped up, dude, I talked about that shit for months. My family got so sick of hearing about it. But dude, yeah. I marked out, like, man, it was like a WWF thing for me, dude. Like, I was like, oh my God, yes! Ah! Yeah. You know, so <laughs> when the movie finally came out, it was so amazing to me. And then, I don't know if you've ever read any of the comics, but like, the All Ash versus Freddy versus Jason. All of them. Incredible, man. Incredible. So, so it, awesome. That's one of the best comics I've ever read, period. Yep. Yeah. And uh, there was talks a while about them making a movie of it. They but, did. They but did. you had all the production companies that are, you know, arguing back and forth. And um, actually, there was an Evil Dead video game for the PlayStation 2. And there, there it, was two of them. Yeah. But I, I can't remember if it was uh, Regeneration or Fistful of Boomstick. But in one of them, you collected little scrolls and it had interviews with Bruce Campbell. Yeah. And in one of those interviews, he talked about Ash versus Freddy versus Jason and how um, the differing production companies. And I thought it was funny, too, because in that they talked about Evil Dead 4. And he was like, yeah. well, let me call up Sam Raimi and see, yeah. would you rather do Spider-Man 2 or Evil Dead 4? <laughs> you know, like, and it's Bruce yeah. Campbell. So, you know, he's, you know, completely goofing about it. You know? I, got a, I got a brick sitting in my bedroom, okay, with a picture from my buddy Billy Lee Highsmith. Um, so he he lives where the cabin was shot. Since then, the cabin's been burned down. This mm -hmm. dude went out to the goddamn cabin. It's like private property now. 
and and there was a recording of Sam Raimi on a in a TV or uh, a radio thing back 20 years ago, and he said if you ever dug six feet over and six feet down from where the fireplace was, there's a cigar box with secrets we left in there. And everyone thought he was joking. This fucking dude last year <laughs> went out there and dug it and found it and then brought it to them. And he gave me a brick and he showed me and he sent me a picture. And inside of it was movie clippings, cigarette uh, 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 lighters and, and all kinds of stuff. And he told Sam Raimi, I found your box. Here it is. Here's what's inside of it. That is that's a yeah that's intense could you imagine yeah. sam raimi's reaction to like holy shit this is yeah. awesome yeah yeah <laughs> amazing, dude. The, fans are amazing i love hearing stories like that oh me too um on friday three we're talking about friday 13th three we're going in blank what's the first thing that pops in your head when i say friday the 13th part three the mask that's it yeah it's a mask and, and then secondly is shelly's mask because that's the only mask i don't have yet which I want yeah. to get. I have 65 masks. I want that blank mask, but everyone says it's hard to get. So I'm trying to get it from one guy, but just the mask. When you think, because when you think of three, like what was different? Well, it's the first time you saw him in the mask. So mm -hmm. that's what I think of. What do you think of? The mask. The mask. Absolutely. Hands down. The mask. And um, I don't know why, but for some reason, it's always stuck in me. And this is such a little scene that means nothing. But when they're trying to siphon the gas. Yeah, yeah. That's another scene. When I was a kid, that to me was the coolest thing. And I tried to do it in my mom's car. She beat my ass, man. <laughs> I didn't think it was real. I didn't think you could really do it. Obviously, I didn't yeah. do it. But yeah. that scene always stuck with me, man. The mask and the siphoning out the gas. Those are the two things that always yeah. stuck with me. The, the, the clean three to me is, is the, my favorite mask ever. Just the, that nice clean three. Yep. You know, and then the four. The four but, is my favorite with the yeah, S. Yeah. Mark. That, that's got Ted on it. That's so sick. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, you can't go wrong with the three, but the four with the with the axe is is good. I, I have one that's just the all-white three, and I have every yeah. signature of every Jason on that one, too. Dude, that's so cool. Thanks. Oh, no problem, man. Like I said, this is, this is like, I mean, this is like looking at a museum for me. Remember um, in part three when uh, she jumps out of the lake, the lady in the lake at the end? Yeah, with the worms on her face and shit. Yes, dude, that's so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. And then I got I got yeah. vengeance. This is vengeance, Jason, right here. I got him on I put him in water. Oh, uh, is that really in water? Oh, uh, I took the water out, but yeah, I have a pump and everything. Oh, dude, that's so cool. It lights up. I have a video of it on, on um, either the Vengeance page. I think the Vengeance page, yeah. There's a video of him underwater like that. I, I had a guy make that. And I do have in the description, guys, I have the Instagram links for Peter and for Vengeance. So make sure you're following these guys so that way you can get updates about Vengeance too. Um, Cause like I said, with COVID, I know things are crazy, but any updates you have, if you could also update me so I can put it on my Instagram so I can update the fans too. Um, definitely want to keep spreading the word about it, man. I'm so excited for it. Thanks man. We can't, we can't wait to do it. I mean, we're probably going to shoot March, April, hopefully 2021. And then I don't know, maybe release at the end of 2021, but yeah, we're, we're pumped. Yo, I bet. Uh, two more questions for you. Um, Friday the 13th, 2009, your opinions on that one. Okay. So, uh, one of the best portrayals of Jason I I've ever seen overall, the movie though, it's weird. It has, it has a low replay value for me. I don't know why, but, but I do love seeing Derek Mears. I, I don't think you could have nailed a Derek Mears in the newer generations any better, Jason, any better than Derek Mears. Mm -hmm. Um, the storyline with him kidnapping her a little weird. And for some reason to me, besides the characters just weren't as lovable or as likable, but I, I, the movie's great. I thought it was shot great. I love those first 10 minutes where they basically took from one to three. And when that movie started, I'm like, wow, this is phenomenal. This is what, what every fan wants to see, you know? And then they got, uh, the kills were great. Derek Mears, I talked to him um, at a show. Remember what I love when he, he's on top of the roof and he jumps off and yeah. stabs through the guy's eye? He said that the camera was, was – so it's a fake wall because the camera goes through the wall into the top, right? So he said when he landed, he couldn't bounce with his knees because the camera wouldn't catch him right. So he had to land stiff, and he was hurting his back every time he landed. Uh. So he did it, and, then, and that's how they did that scene. But to elaborate a little more, I'm a bigger guy, 5'11", 280, but I felt like I could run back in the day before I was hurt and old. To me, it's, it's more menacing to run. This is where me and Kane differ. 
is you got a guy who's 6'6", 6'7", 260, and he can run you down like that when he throws the axe, that scares the shit out of me. I, I see where we're, we're a little different here. I absolutely love the fact that he kidnapped the girl um, because in Friday too, you know, with Ginny, like she totally gets him when she puts on the sweater, you know, she's like, Jason, you listen to mother. So I feel like I've always felt like Friday the 13th, 2009 is actually a remake of one, two, and three. Right. And they it mashed is. them all together, you know? Right. So putting that in there kind of to me is the homage to Ginny. You know, he sees her, reminds him of his mom. So right. he can't bring himself to take her out quite yet. Right. So that, that's where I enjoyed that. I did. I agree with you on the characters. They were shallow. They were, you know, ridiculous, but I do love Chewie and Lawrence. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when they're out, when Chewie's out and he's playing hockey and he turns around and sees Jason, he's like, oh, man, he's got the hockey stick. He's like, I think this belongs to you. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like, I thought that was great, man. Yeah, yeah, perfect nipple placement, too. Remember that? Yep, perfect nipple placement. <laughs> yeah, I, I like the twist, too, how they killed the, what you thought was going to be the final girl. Oh, she, yeah. When you watch the 31 on 31, that's one thing you're going to hear. Yeah, and I love I, how, like, um, at, at the time I was with a girl, we used to always um, – Talk about but every time we saw a bus, we're like, is Jason gonna come out of there? I love how the bus was like the entry into his his holes. I thought that was kind of cool too. But he, yes. he 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 was menacing, man. When when he has the chain on him and and he gets ripped and then he breaks up through the beam and how strong he looks right there. I thought he played phenomenal as Jason. Oh, and I love how they get I loved his character. He's all, he's like a survivalist too. Yeah, you know, like he has traps set around the camp. Like right. he, this makes you know how he's able to track these kids down. It goes more deep in depth about that. So with the little bell system. Yeah. 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 And, and then, um, uh, I was talking to, uh, Derek Mears about it too. It's pretty, pretty like sad. Awesome. He has alopecia. So he doesn't have any hair that grows anywhere. He has no eyebrows, no nothing. And he uh -huh. said, my whole life people are telling me a monster and I'm a monster. And now I get to play one. I was like, wow. Uh, horrible. We're just talking about emotion in horror movies, man. And you're bringing that up. Yeah, I'm gonna have yeah, to lay a so. violin track over top of this segment. I got a picture of me and him head to head. It's more like this, but. <laughs> <laughs> but my last question for you about Friday three, skull count. I always do a skull count to end the episode. Zero skulls being the worst, five skulls being the best. Where do you place Friday the Thirteenth Part Three? Four. Fair. Four. I just I I, I, have, I love I love four number one, then six then three, then seven. And seven's not even a good movie overall. I just think the way Kane looked in it, it just, but I, if the MPAA didn't mess up the kills, I think he'd be higher on people's lists. Kane in seven got the dog shit beat out of him. Yes. Yeah. Go back you know, and like, watch when, when that roof falls on him and he, his head gets smashed into the stairs and then he gets dragged down the stairs. He said he got knocked out from that. And, uh, yeah, and then um, was it eight where he did the longest fire stunt? Seven. It was seven. Yeah, yeah, and I know he got burned up pretty bad in that scene, too, from what I remember hearing. No, no. He got burned earlier in his career. But that's what they asked him. Yeah, they, they asked him, do you want to um, do this part? He goes, I don't care. They're like, what? This guy almost died from being burned. So if you go up to watch uh, Kane Hodder to Helen back, it's on uh, Shudder now. Um, you could watch his whole story about him being burned and him being bullied when he was young and everything. Great, great documentary. That's He's on the bucket list of me meeting, man. He seems like yeah. such a nice dude and – um, you know, like, like I said, talking to CJ was so incredible. CJ is one of the most down to earth, nicest guys. And, um, it was amazing being able to talk to him as well. And you being able to work with him, I envy you. I, you know, yeah. you guys are a great team and I love vengeance. Um, I thank you so much for coming on, man. Uh, don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. No Everybody problem. else. Thank you for watching Sledgehammer Horror. Remember, keep talking horror, stay what you are, and we'll see you soon, guys. See you later. Oh, uh, that's, that's you? This is me uh, before I met Jason, and this is me after I meet Jason. Oh, dude, that's incredible. <laughs> awesome. Look, at it's even got the same deformed head. <laughs> dude, I don't care. When I'm 34 years old, I see yeah. that, and I am taken back to being seven years old and wanting to see me as a WWF action figure, dude. That awesome. is so incredible, man. You know, it's, it's easier. I mean, it still was expensive, don't get me wrong, but now with those 3D printers, you can make things much quicker and easier. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, so that, I mean, they got this down, like, it's hard to tell, but perfect. No, that looks great. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. And then I got that Jason there. I'm going to do some funny videos with me and Jason, because I have the, the, the Vengeance Jason that the guy made. The guy's phenomenal. Even when you take the mask off, it's our Vengeance Jason. So, That's awesome. You know, so many cool fans, man. I'm so lucky and blessed that we're all, like, in that community. We all have the same love, you know?
Dude, and it, that's what it is. It's a family. When you're in the horror community, the amount of people that are willing to just jump to help you do whatever you got to do is amazing, man. Like you, you, I asked you, you were like, absolutely, let's do this. This would be a great time. And to you, know, to you guys, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. You're going to talk about horror, something you love. To me, this means the world. So all you guys that come on here, man, it's such an honor for me. It's, this is, you know, I have my kids, my wife, you guys. This is the best yeah. time of my life right now, man. I'm living my best life. I don't want to be a meme. Yeah. But I'm literally living my best life right now. Not, I appreciate it. But I, I'm I'm you, you know, because I'm a fan. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just a fan that, that just same thing. So I don't feel like I'm any different. I feel like we're family. And that's the other last point on the on the horror community. Nobody judges anybody. Everyone's like a family and everyone's problems. You can talk about I mean, I know people call me about depression, people talk about suicide. Everybody, nobody like everyone just gels and they kind of just get it and they want to help each other. It's really that's really it. amazing. You want to help. You want to help. Yeah. I want you to be better. You know, and it's funny because real quick before we go, I'll bring this up. We go to yeah. horror cons and shit. And the amount of people that walk in with the darkest Freddy or Pinhead, yeah. my son will walk up to him and can I get a picture? Yeah, sure. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, cool. and it's just the, that family feeling. You, you hear horror con and people are like, oh, that's got to be scary and weird. But it's not. It's so genuine and nice and fun. Anybody that has not been to a con, I strongly, strongly recommend you go. You will have the time yeah. of your life if you go. You know what I think the other thing no one talks about is, is the, the psyche of, of a child. It's, when, it's like when we were children, this is what was cool for us. And in a way, when we go to these cons and see these figures, we're a child. And I think yeah. that's where we bond when we see another child fan. That's me when I'm young. And it brings you back. I got goosebumps. It brings you back to like that time. So it never really dies for you. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That God, it's so cool that you feel the same way as me, man. That's so awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks. Well, yeah, like I said, don't go anywhere. Everybody yeah. else, thank you so much. I love you guys so much. And I'll talk to you soon.